The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Nikki Spagnola. Well, quite a bit has happened since we last <laughs> convened here <laughs> inside the SWBC podcast studio. And I know all of you get all of your Cowboys news here on Mix Shots. All of it. Every bit of it. And so you tune in each week just to find out what's going on. And so if you've been listening to Mix Shots from last Monday over and over the past week, we are here to fill you in on everything that's gone on in the last week, and we could we could uh, have an eight-hour show today uh, to wrap up what's gone on the last mm-hmm. seven yeah, or eight days. Yeah, I was going to suggest we go backwards <laughs> <laughs> since, <laughs> since uh, everything hit the fan after we finished. What, what, what was going to hit the fan? <laughs> yeah, I decided to use everything <laughs> instead of S, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. or, or what you hear in some post-game interviews in the NCAA tournament, like from the – from the uh, Gonzaga star from here, Drew Timmy last yes, night. Drew he was, yes. dropping, he was dropping Pierce? bombs. Yeah, J.J. Yeah. J. J. Pierce. <laughs> he was dropping bombs after in the game well, and after the game. in the game, too, by the way. <laughs> well, they had the mic was too close to the to the game. Is that what it was? You no, it was no, a post-game no. interview. Post-game. He oh. purpose. I mean, he. it just is. It's, you know how they talk over J.J. J. Pierce? It's his, <laughs> yeah, okay. It's yeah, J.J. J. Pierce has been bullied throughout Yeah, the, the, the school district. Well, Sure. <laughs> he did some bullying on the court. Yeah, he's, he's well, you. he's only done it for about eight years Thank there. Yeah, how long, how long is this guy going to play this there? Is it? Is it a, it's got to be. It's got to be it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it could have been in last year, and he decided to come back. That's true. Yeah. So uh, good decision by him, too, because mm-hmm. I think he upped his value for an NBA team. But I, not as a personal speaker, maybe. Well, no, no, no I think good. it. No, he, yeah. You yeah, want him to right. speak. <laughs> uh, that's right. That's what we want, right? Uh-huh. Let's not criticize anybody for stuff And the game was say. on TBS or TNT. It wasn't mm-hmm. on yeah. CBS. And what does so that mean, it, Bill? It's, it's that no means one you, heard him? You no, no, no. Anything it, you want. No, it's cable. And so you can, okay. yeah. <laughs> Boy, we have turned into this nice that's society why, these days to where we can just curse and. That's why Bar- Bar- Barkley can, can be on TNT, but we put him on CBS. Everybody's not yeah. happy with Barkley oh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so if we're going to start backwards. Has anything happened this morning? I've, I've, I have not uh, seen okay. anything other than supposedly bringing in some guys for physicals. That's right. Or I don't know if it's a workout or what, but they're. Lower level free agents. Well, hell, run it down, baby. Do you, Let's run it you, down. Uh, what we got going on? I want to lower level free agents that might start for this team. Well, you never know. That's right. You know, sometimes he he misspeaks. Uh-huh. That's okay. Say he he only yeah. wants to talk about the <laughs> higher level free agents or the higher level players that have come over in trades. I'm, I'm, right. It, yeah. I'm, I'm glad he wasn't here when I came out as an undrafted free agent. That's right. I'm so yeah. glad I wasn't here. Yeah. I would never get an interview from him. I never. Right. Oh, he's. I, He's That's a lower level, level player. <laughs> lower level player. He wasn't even drafted. Lower <laughs> level salary. Oh, well, we're talking mo- okay, monetary. We're not talking okay. you know, All right, guys sorry. are going to make $10 sorry, million a year. My bad. Right? My bad. My bad. <laughs> we're talking the J. Ron curses of the nah. world. Yeah, he was only the, the, the turned out to be the leading tackler better. on the team one year, and <laughs> right. so so is Donovan Wilson. And now is he now no longer a lower level <laughs> player, like a sixth round pick? <laughs> no, he was a priority. <laughs> How about Cooper Rush? Is he a lower level mm-hmm. player? He or was he... a priority. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, but his salary. So not... if. If they don't sign <laughs> Traven Howard out the of TCU, linebacker. Horn Frog, right? I don't think they're going to say. Oh, there goes the season. Oh, okay. Right. Traven or Trayvon? Well, but Traven. They, Traven. they will if someone goes down with an injury and he's got to start for you. He won't. Nah, he don't. He doesn't think he's going to be. They here. got Demone Clark. They do. That's right. That's right. So. They don't have Having Anthony Barr. Having said all that, all we of that. clear that up. <laughs> you want to all start of that. <laughs> with Brandon Cooks as the new Cowboys Man, that's receiver. crazy. That is crazy. What did you guys think of that? You know, uh, I've always liked him. 
I really have. But when you look at the resume, you wonder why so many teams, right? You wonder why so many teams in such a short period of time, number one, but you give him credit for producing on all of those teams with some pretty shady quarterbacks. So you're looking at 1,000 yards, what, for six years, I think it was? Six of the previous seven. Seven. That's, yeah. that's, that's pretty good for someone, and he's under the radar still. Who, who's on his fifth team. Is that, I mean, that, so that, that might give me pause. It might give me pause. But obviously, I'm sure Stephen has, has done his due diligence. There's a, di- a couple of different ways you can look at it. He's, okay, he's, this is his fifth team. Well, that means that five teams have wanted him, too. Well, and, and, and the majority of them have been trades. I, I believe every one of them was. He got traded from uh, New Orleans to New England. New England traded him to the Rams. The Rams traded him to Houston. And now Houston he trades got, him to the Cowboys. He got traded before he was drafted. Wow. The, uh, the spot? <laughs> <laughs> he was traded by the Cardinals as a 2014 first-round pick to the Saints, who then selected Brandon Cooks. So, he <laughs> I mean, that, that was a sign. Now, that's a sign. A that you're going to be traded a lot in your career. You, <laughs> yeah. just, you just were picked by a team that just traded for his you. Years with, his years with the Saints – weren't bad. They just decided not to pick up his fifth year mm-hmm. option. Mm-hmm. And then when he was the one year in New England, oh by the way, who was the quarterback was his career year. And then he goes to the Rams. He was only there two years. It was golf, but he got to a Super Bowl. Uh and he went to the Super Bowl with New England, by mm-hmm. the way. Mm-hmm. And then he goes to Houston and who was throwing him the ball last year? Well, who was supposed to be throwing him the ball when he went to Houston? Yeah, right? So, say it. Deshaun Well, Watson. Deshaun was. Ah, there you go. Yeah. So. Because it was uh, April of 2020, he was traded, and that was, uh, so Houston deals Hopkins, and so now they got Cooks coming in. So mm-hmm. he was the guy that was basically replacing Hopkins. Right, and then last year. That's tough. Last yeah. year, <laughs> and then he wanted out because of the mess that was mm-hmm. there, right? And uh, the Cowboys actually. Uh, and we talked about it here, that, right. that you know, you're looking at veteran guys, then, you know, we're – Sitting there going, okay, they can add somebody. And they you know? and they didn't trade him. They kept him. It was they, cost prohibitive as far as his contract goes for this? any team. After, last year. after he wanted out and they didn't trade him, they <laughs> decapitalized him. He was a captain and they took it away well, from him. He was, what? <laughs> it was uh, the way I understand it is going into the season, they were on great terms, you know, and then things went sour. You know, halfway through the season, yeah, and, that, and I think that they basically had an agreement: if things do go south, okay, we'll move you at midseason, and then his contract was such that he couldn't be taken on by anyone. Well, here's why: yeah. they signed him to a two-year extension that would, I believe, start this year. Mm-hmm. Thirty-nine point seven six million dollars. So. With a sixteen million dollars signing bonus, so he made his money, right? And this year, he had a eighteen million dollar base salary. So part of the trade was not only the Cowboys giving him this year's fifth, which was, I believe, the comp- the other compensatory pick, because they didn't have a fifth, right? Right. Am I right? And a sixth next year, but. Houston agreed to pay six million of his eighteen million dollar guaranteed base salary. Okay. So they accounted for that. So the Cowboys are on the books for twelve million uh, plus roster bonus. So that helped get the trade done. That they took up some of that money. Here's the way I look at it: they're paying the full eighteen million dollars that Brandon Cooks is owed, and the Texans are picking up the six million dollar salary cap hit that Zeke Elliott counts against <laughs> the cap this year. But 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 he's a June he's a he's a June one release. Right. Remember right, that. Right. And it's six five point eight. Yeah. yeah. Well, ah, there yeah. you go. But they don't get his base salary until June second. 
like get the 10.9 million back into their cap. So it's like a savings account. Uh, how many months? Four, a four month uh, CD mm -hmm. because then they can use that money to pay for their draft, which now without those two other picks, I think it's around seven and a half million. So it's like a savings account that they can sign those guys for their rookie pool. You know, when you when you look at his career, I mean, obviously, any player has gone to more than one team. When you get to that other team, you know, you've you got something to prove. You have to go into the locker room, let them know you're that player, let them know that they can depend on you. And then once you get out on the field, of course, you have to produce. Right. He's done that for five or six different teams. And, and that's the testament to him and how mentally strong he is. And that's something you said look at it several ways, a couple of ways. Why is he on so many teams? Yeah, that could be a problem. But the fact that he went to all of those teams and he produced, okay, 1,000 yards for five seasons, that's tough. I mean, that, that lets you know that he is a professional, if nothing else. And I, I, that's what we need on this team, almost like Amari. You know, you want that guy that's a professional, no matter what goes on around him. I'm going to be your consistent uh, thermometer, so to speak. And he was uh, – the year that he was acquired by the Texans, Watson was his quarterback that year, and 81 catches, 1,150 yards, and six touchdowns. Right. The next year, Watson's not the quarterback. Tyrod Taylor starts the season, and then Davis Mills takes over and started 11 games. Tyrod Taylor started uh, six games last year – or in 2021 for them. And he had 90 catches – a thousand yards and six wow. touchdowns, and so it was al almost the exact same numbers as what he had with Watson as his quarterback mm -hmm. the year before, and that's with Taylor and and a rookie. He's got to be to obviously he's he's quarterback friendly, and that's what you want. Well, and he fits exactly what the Cowboys need. I mean, when you look at what was out there as far as Odell Beckham Jr. and anyone else, and Adam Thielen was a free agent out there. You know, and I don't think it's um, who was a little bit older, I, but I don't think it's coincidental that Adam Thielen immediately signed with Carolina sure after did. this trade happened. Sure and so it makes you wonder, okay, how much were the Cowboys in conversations uh -huh. with Thielen's people um, as well? And but the good, and the good but you look at, at the way they fit into the offense, and I think Brandon <coughs> Cooks is the guy. Because they can play him in the slot mm -hmm. uh, more so than you would use Gallup in the slot yes. or even Tolbert mm -hmm. in the slot. Uh, and the good thing is, is even though there's another year on his contract, if the if it doesn't work out, the Cowboys can go move on, and it doesn't cost them a dime, because they Houston had to take care of all the guarantees. Yes, and and by the way, uh, you know you wonder, okay, what kind of guy is he when he's going from one team to the next team to the next team? Well, uh, I heard one of the beat writers, I don't recall who it was, uh, in Houston. Uh, remarked yesterday that uh, in all his 28 years covering the NFL, Brandon Cooks is one of the one of the best guys that he's he, as far he's as he's got to be. He's yeah. got to be and to so, make that so adjustment. So he's, he's kind of like has that makeup that T.Y. Hilton had. I mean, you were so yeah, impressed right, with T.Y. Right. when he came in here. And 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 the other thing is now this really totally opens up the draft. Right, it's not like I gotta have a wide receiver. Right, <laughs> right. You know what? I, I was doing. I, uh, we went on a little family trip to Broken Bow over uh, nice. in, into spring break, and so uh, the rest of the family had gone ahead. I had some work to do here, and so I went on Friday to join them. And that's what I'm doing in my head <laughs> as I'm driving. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm performing the exercise. Okay, if the Cowboys. <laughs> Started the season today. Because that's kind of like what we've always said going into the draft. You want to be able to feel like if you had to play a game on April 1st, April 15th, before the draft, you want to be able to have a team where you don't have to fill in the blanks. Like you could you could play a game with your roster as mm -hmm. it sets okay. right now. So I'm sitting there going, okay, could the Cowboys play a game right now with the roster they have? And that was before the Brandon Cooks trade. And okay. I was thinking, no, they need a wide receiver. And so – I'm up by myself on the drive back yesterday morning, <laughs> and I turn totally, on the totally I turn on the radio, <laughs> and and I hear about the Brandon Cooks trade. I'm like, yeah, now we can play a game. Now we can play a game. <laughs> I mean, think about it. If you want to do it right, you you you've got 
starters on offense that depending and on even at, at tight end you can go with Ferguson, Ferguson and Hendershot and McEwen your, can be you know, your tight end and you can right? you got can, your three wide receivers maybe four depending on what Tolbert does the offensive line uh, after restructuring Tyron Smith he could be your left tackle if he's ready to go Tyler Smith is your left guard Biotish McG- uh, um, Martin and hopefully Steele is back. Well, technically right now you can't play a game uh, with one running back. I was going to say. But because right now we're, we're Pollard can't wide play. Receiver Pollard can't right play. Right now we yeah, have no run, play well, one game. running back. That, that <laughs> opens up the window to qualify a running back high in the draft, mm-hmm. right? Um, you, but you could start, right? But you need somebody – and that's why they probably brought in Ronald Jones today. From McKinney. It's, be, uh, it's being reported anyway uh, for the physical and whatever else they do. He's a veteran guy that's been around the block a few years. Um, and, and, and at some point they had to do that. But in the draft now, you say I got the 26 pick, and if there's a couple running backs available that late, you could actually trade down and get one of them. Right. I said even before the Zeke move that you could take a running back at 26. Yeah. I mean, when, when you're looking at where It's a second-round pick. Yeah. Right? right. And where you but, look but, where but, Pollard is, too, in his career. Guys, but no one's thinking of veteran running back? Have we No, that, not, and not, they are that. because, I mean, that's why Ronald Jones reportedly Unfortunately, is here. Unfortunately, veteran running backs are out of the league. No one wants a veteran running back. They it, want a that, young that is, guy. They, they, we have never, I mean, as much as we've talked about it, they've never gone that direction. No one's really ha- hadn't even hinted looking at a veteran running back. And is that because of it? I'm looking at one Z. Yeah, no. And, not, and, not, and no, wait, don't. no. <laughs> By the way, uh, from what I I think we're the only three people in here that, that <laughs> like Zeke. No, no, no. <laughs> Number one, since we're on Zeke, we, uh, and we'll we go. Let's we, go. Let's do Zeke in the next segment. Okay. But go okay. ahead if you okay. want. Yeah, okay. no, that's okay. start on it. We okay. can do Zeke on the next segment. Okay. But um, just remember, I just wanted to point out, and I already did about his money. You don't get that money. It's not like they got all this money still mm-hmm. in the salary cap. Uh, it was Friday, maybe it was, it was suggested that they had enough money to do something at wide receiver. So they were probably already in, in talks with this one. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah, we can talk about the Zeke move. We got Stephon Gilmore to get into and as Steph- well. That's right. We didn't cover that. We didn't cover the guys. No, the guys that resigned, did they do that before? Like Wilson uh, and Van Der Esch? Which was significant to me. Yes, getting those two guys. Oh, I, that's, that is that's a no brainer. Yeah, as of last Monday, we those hadn't been done yet. And the, and the restructures for uh, Dak. Yes. Zach, and then Tyron. After that, uh, that opened up uh, a lot of money that they could use. Uh, and you know, you were going to at some point extend Dak anyway. Um, same thing with Zach. You, you don't have a problem there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then Tyron restructured his that he can make his money, mm-hmm. but he's got to play for it. Right. And That's the good thing about him missing so many games last year. They were able to restructure his contract this year to where they could put playtime incentives in there, and it wouldn't count against the cap this year. And, oh, by the way um, – and the one that I thought also they needed to get done, they got it done um, late uh, in the week, uh, re-signing Cooper Rush. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure he saw all these other quarterbacks kind of moving on and getting signed, and he wasn't. Um, and so getting him back, you know, at the price they did. At the pri- yeah, it was it, it, it was it was minimal, right? Uh, for what they ended up. Well, when you saw them. what Gardner Minshew got with the Colts, uh, and it was some very similar contract, um, and I've got it down here somewhere. Um, oh, yeah. so Minshew the market, not with Philly anymore? No, yeah, he went to the God, Colts. What will they do? <laughs> well, they signed Marcus Mariota. Oh, Mar- Mariota, and actually Mariota fits what they do better than what Minshew. Uh, and Baker Baker Mayfield, right? To Tampa, Tampa. Yeah. And, and you saw his deal. Yeah. One year, $4 million. So 
Tampa has no money. But, and that's no, why people were talking about zero. Some people were talking about Zeke going to Tampa because Skip Pete is there. Well, they are like forty thousand dollars under the salary cap right now. I, I'm oh yeah. I mean, they are. They have no money to spend. Yeah, so. th- thanks to Tom Brady, mm-hmm. but he they got, got, a, Super got a Bowl. Super Bowl. <laughs> so basically, uh, Cooper Rush ended up with a two-year, five million dollar max. I mean, uh, total with six million dollar max. But he he's um, where's his cap? I got it here. He, he's only like two point uh, five million under the cap. So uh, for this year, uh, one point five million dollar base. Uh, plus his uh, and signing the base, half and the base the is guaranteed. Bonus. Yeah, yeah, the base is guaranteed, and his one point, uh, 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 and then he's got a signing bonus also of one point two five million. Yeah, so he's yeah. like two million under the cap. How many teams is he going to go to? Who's that? Talking, you're, no, you're, Cooper. You're, you're, oh, Rush. Cooper, right. Yeah. Oh, you're Cooper. I was, I was yeah, talking yeah. about Baker Mayfield. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, Baker, his deal now and what would appeal to him at Tampa Bay is th- this is his make good year. Okay. He, because he, there were no teams that this were going to offer This is his make good year. No, uh, he's, he, needs to, he needs to perform for Tampa Bay. Because people are talking about that Kyle Trask, it, it's a competition between him and there's no competition with Kyle Trask and him. I mean, Trask played one year of college football. and uh, But when you sign a one-year deal, you yeah. basically say, okay, prove it. Right. And then somebody else will say, I need a quarterback. And he looked around the league, and Minshew's got one year, $3.5 million with the Colts. And they're, they have an open position at quarterback right now. And so those guys are like, okay, that's my best opportunity to compete for a starting spot. And I might be able to get my career going again. Yeah, that's, and that's what I was looking at. Yeah. You know, the career was was trending upward from the beginning. And, man, this guy, talking about Baker Mayfield, this guy has, ah, wow, he has really gone through so much, so many teams, so many many injuries, so many. But he revived it by showing up with the Rams and two days later winning a Thursday (laughs) night game. And all of a sudden, wow. Uh, One Thursday night game. One Thursday night game. And all of a sudden, he's talking about the game. Now it's 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 career. It's quarterbacks. Yes. There's not enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, Andy Dalton got re signed. Mm -hmm. I saw that. And nice deal, too. Yep. Carolina. And and obviously, he's going to be the mentor to whoever they draft with the first pick in the draft. Right. Now. And he may Stroud have to or, start until yeah, that guy's depending ready. Depending on yeah, so, what they decide to do with it. So it's a great deal for Andy Dalton. And, in fact, it was two years, $10 million. So he got uh, – you can see the, what the market for quarterbacks, where it went – from day one of free agency, Dalton gets two years, $10 million, eight guaranteed. So that spot in Carolina is now taken. Now all of a sudden everything's dropping for that, those type quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Who yeah, are I was going to say, these who are could certain fill type in. of quarterbacks. Yeah, for yeah. those type quarterbacks. And so the market got cut in half for Mayfield and uh, the Minshew types. Yes. Where they're making half that now. And and it's like an entirely different pool. Mm-hmm. You and, know, it's, yeah. it's not the upper echelon. And I'll guarantee you, know, you what, what Cooper Rush's agent was doing, it's saying, okay, will any of these quarterbacks that have uh, teams that need a starting quarterback give him a chance to compete? And obviously they didn't. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, we'll just stay here and get some guaranteed money. And uh, I wonder why that is. Maybe I don't have to play. Would, I, would, would you take Minshew over Cooper? I mean, you know, I think he, Cooper would have a chance. He's probably he's what, got his problems, but probably what we know, mm-hmm. we might. Yeah. But other teams, they'll look at him physically. They didn't see the the what six and zero. Oh? They were four five and, and one, five, five and one, five and one in his yeah. career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in one year, and maybe. But not. even this past season, Minshew's stock went down the last three weeks of the season because he had an opportunity to start for a Super Bowl team and didn't win two games. But I'm assuming he got drafted, right, Minshew? Uh, and, and Cooper Rush. Have to see where he was drafted. You know, once you get tagged, yeah, I know. As an undrafted <laughs> rookie, you'll never make it up, buddy. 
It will affect you the rest, rest of, of your, your life. life. Not career, but life. <laughs> Even into your 60s, it will affect you. I never made that money back. And Minshew was a sixth-round pick Six? of Jacksonville okay, in 2019. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, speaking, Go ahead, and we come back. Um, yeah. Guy that uh, was drafted. Well, there's a couple of guys who were drafted uh, in the first round, in top half of the first round, who are now – well, one is a Dallas Cowboy. One no longer is a Dallas Cowboy. Mm. We talk about them when we come back on Mix Shots. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh, she's doing great. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? <sighs> great job, honey! Oh. oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. <sighs> Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. You hear that? I'm a torrential downpour. Torrential? What's that even mean? It means you can't see out of your windshield. And if you have the wrong car insurance, you might have to make it rain to fix your bumper. So switch to Allstate, save money, and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Based on coverage and limits selected, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. What do you call a group of grown men and women with their faces painted silver and blue who get together every week to share a three-hour-long ritual of jumping, sinking, and toasting Miller Lite in 10-gallon hats while yelling, how about them cowboys? You call it Miller Time in Dallas. Here's to the Cowboys. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2021 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Back, back to Mick Shots. Roofing and waterproofing. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. From corporate homes to your home. Have your roof checked by choice. Not by chance. Call now, 214-225-4860, and that would be kpostcompany.com. Okay, we uh, still have time left here on Mix Shots to talk about the uh, some more of the moves of the last week. And two that we haven't hit on and gone in-depth on yet are the trade for Stefan Gilmore and the release of Zeke Elliott. Let's do Gilmore in this segment. We'll save Zeke for the last segment. All right. Stephon Gilmore giving up a fifth-round draft pick for him. What do y'all think? I think that's a bargain. That's what I think. This guy's top quality, man. I mean, he's he. You don't get MVP for nothing, right? You know, defensive MVP mm -hmm. under Bill Belichick. You're you checking all the boxes now, you know, and you have a chance to bring that guy here and have him play with Trayvon. This is this is the top right now. I mean, the the top cornerback duos. In the NFL. Gilmore, uh, back in 2012, was a first-round draft pick, number 10 overall of the Buffalo Bills. And you look at his career and the Pro Bowl selections, five of them in his career, and they have all come since 2016. So 2016, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Did not make the Pro Bowl last year with uh, his one year in Indianapolis, previous year in Carolina. Here's another one. He's gone. okay, one, two, three, four. This is his fifth team. You know what, though? You can, and as you point out, with his defensive player of the year selection with the Patriots in 2019, mm -hmm. um, you can, you could, in five Pro Bowls in his career. Yep. If he puts a couple more years together, he's in that uh, Canton conversation. Yes, he is. Yeah. And to think, he is only, he's got 29 career interceptions. He is only. 28 interceptions away <laughs> from Everson Wallace. Hey, good in his luck, career. buddy. Good luck, pal. <laughs> yeah, but how many of Everson's came after he turned 30? 
That was my only drawback when I saw it. I said, okay, he's thir- He's going to turn 30 in uh-huh. September. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the stuff he's, 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 he's taking care of turn, himself. He's going to, no, seen. he's turning 33 33? in September. Yes. He, he's taking oh, good care right. of himself. I was thinking of, um, of uh, Brandon, Brandon Cooks. Yes. yes. No, he, he's taking no, he really does, good yeah. care of himself. So right. when I listened to him, uh, he did a conference call on Friday. Uh, I thought I was listening to T.Y. Hilton. Just the things he said. Yes. Very mature. Um, not bragging. You know, I'm coming here to work. Uh, I try to improve every year. And sounded like he had no problem whatsoever helping the young. That's what I was going to say. He he would be invaluable in that regard with the young quarterbacks we have here. McQuama, who played cornerback at South Carolina. Right. He's he's a South Carolina guy, too. Oh, wow. I mean, think about it. Until until they put him here and not knowing if they will even give – Anthony Brown, a one-year deal coming off his Achilles, Diggs would have been the most experienced corner going into his fourth year. Yes, Jordan Lewis. And, and Jordan Lewis, assuming he's – back and, from By the way, play. and I saw him uh, on the field starting his on-field workouts. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's on the way. But that's those two guys, Deron Bland, mm-hmm. Wright, McQuamu, we're talking young guys, and even Diggs. But the way he answered the question – was I would like to teach them what I didn't know when I was young. That's right. That I learned mm-hmm. now. Uh, and I and he's that got was, some talented and, cornerbacks to really mentor. Right. I mean, they they need if if he comes in and does his job, you're talking about Laquamu going from potential to reaching it, right? And and, and what six four? Mm-hmm. Yep. That kind of potential, I'm sure. Uh, Gallimore, Gallimore, when he comes here, he's thinking. Uh, Gilmore, when he comes here, he's thinking. It's going to be my, my my playing time here is going to be brief, but his impact could last for a long time. Well, even along those lines, with the contract situation that, Tra- that the Cowboys faced with Trayvon going into his right. contract year, okay, you now have two uh, established cornerbacks. Who are in contract years right. on both sides. And then you and have gives you options there. Your third guy, Lewis, if Bland doesn't beat him out, who led the team, by the way, yeah, in interceptions. five interceptions yes. last year. And they had him outside. He was really good inside. I still think he can play outside. Uh, but you got some in, interchangeable parts. That's there. what you have. And interchangeable the, parts. And that's what part I like about it. And the key thing is, is so his um, – his base, his cap hit will be like nine point nine million dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, you're not tied to him if it doesn't work out. You're talking about a cornerback, yeah. That got defensive MVP. player. Mm-hmm. The, the first def- cornerback to win that award. I, I, I was going to say I don't. Re- Woodson, maybe Charles Woodson. I, I think that might hey, be It could the be one. either one of them. <laughs> Both of them were pretty damn yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because it always goes to a linebacker or somebody. That's it's a very back unique for a defensive back, and especially a cornerback, yeah. to get MVP. For defensive MVP. I think in 1982, I was close to it, strike year. I mean, but it had to be almost flawless. And when you look at him being playing under Bill Belichick in that New England defense, He's bringing a lot of knowledge to these young guys. And seeing the key thing, yeah, there's my 33. Uh, my, the key thing is, too, that they only have to give up a fifth-round pick for him, right? It's a fifth. So uh, you, you kept your, your draft choices. Same with Brandon Cooks. A fifth, this, sixth, next. Okay, fine. But I still have those first four picks. And then you talk about, uh, what a veteran like that can bring to the team. He he didn't just get MVP because he was picking off interceptions. It was because of the plays that you talked about during the break. You know, the the, the tough uh, uh, plays that stopped the team from moving the chains. He had 11 breakups, and three of them came on the opponent's five pose- final possession of the game mm-hmm. to save three of their four victories. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, that tells you about making plays, right? And he he talked about you know the ability to making make plays. plays at the right time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Charles Woodson in '09 was the defensive player of the year. Uh, he was with the Packers, cornerback. Okay, and go prior to that. It was 1994. The head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes, <laughs> Deion Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, what an introduction! <laughs> and, that, and by the way, we that know was, him as the head coach. <laughs> this is how it, he will be known. And that was Atlanta, by the way. <laughs> it, no, it was San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah, 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 yeah San Francisco. That's Super Bowl year. Don't yeah. don't uh, remind us. That was San Francisco. <laughs> and Rod that Woodson. Non-PI call. Rod Woodson the year before in '93, and Who's looking to see any stud. other corner. And then. 1980, 1980, with the Raiders. Lester? Lester. <laughs> Stick Lester em. Hayes. Stick them. Stick Hayes. Uh, prior to that, 1975 Steelers. Talk about a 6'4 cornerback. Mel Blunt. Mel Blunt. Yeah. Damn. There Damn. you go. And there's... The rest of the story on cornerbacks. See, once been... again, you came around too late. <laughs> <laughs> One year, right? I'm still looking. I'm still looking up at Mel Blunt with the big cowboy hat on. Well, and the, and it, the, the award started in 1971. Otherwise, Mel Renfro would have won. There you go. No, Interesting. I just said no, no, no. He made it. I mean, Hall of Famer. He I mean, got ten that year. If I'm not mistaken. There you go. Yeah. There you go. He could have. Yeah. Good, good, good deal bringing him because because mm-hmm. by the way, cornerback. Would have been right up there with, with running the back and that wide have, receiver, yes. the top three. Mm-hmm. So they took care of two of them right away, and then you're talking about more. with the for draft. The draft, yeah, and it still is, and yeah, right, and, and you still can, and be. you can, yeah, that's right. right, that's exactly right. And the other part of it is, and I don't think this was coincidental either. So the Cowboys make the trade for Gilmore. Mm-hmm. The Eagles have a couple of cornerbacks who were either free agents or on the Slay. about to get the cap casualty list. Slay, Slay as well. Well, James Bradbury he resigned with the Eagles, okay. and then they were the reports were that they were going to release yeah. Darius Slay, and then all of a sudden they <laughs> magically came up with enough money <laughs> to resign Darius Slay. Now Darius Slay may have had in his mind that maybe I'll go to the Cowboys, and then they he's uh, pretty good. <laughs> I like Darius and, and so, uh, as it turns, and the other thing is, look at it this way with the Cowboys. What about at the trade deadline last year? That it was after the trade deadline or right at the trade deadline when the Cowboys started having their injury issues at cornerback with Lewis going down and then mm-hmm. Anthony Brown going down. If that happened a month earlier, Cowboys might have been in the market for a Stephon Gilmore at the trade deadline mm-hmm. last year. You know, yeah, because so, the Colts saw where they were. Uh, right. They weren't going anywhere, and they had a commodity, and so they. And basically, the other thing they did, and this is what teams are starting to do, they're putting salary cap priorities on draft choices like i'll take this if you take this off my hands Mm -hmm. right you take this off my hands just give me this right and so you know a guy like that you'd think you'd get a third round pick but they're looking at it and go yeah but i gotta inherit all this salary cap space and so that's what teams and looking looking at at his age and looking at his age, right exactly so but his his I don't know, 10, 15 minute conference call was pretty impressive. So uh, he'll be a really good addition into that locker room. Was that the uh, something special that the Jerry was talking about at the combine? Don't dismiss us doing something, something special. And we said it in free agency, but I would think the Gilmore move and the Brandon Cooks move. No, is, that's special. That's Those special. Both of them are right? special. Yeah. yeah. Plus, you're you're not sitting there bidding. Basically, to try to sign somebody who's an unrestricted free agent, like right? OBJ or something, because that's when the money goes up. Right. But here, you're taking. You knew what you were going to have to uh, inherit, and it's like, okay, if I got to inherit all that, all you're getting is a fifth. And they're like, okay, 
Great. <laughs> so what? Good what deal. You, he said it too soon. Yeah. So, so what do you think OBJ's reaction was when he heard about uh, the Brandon Cook trade? Oh, he can have another chip on his shoulder. Oh, wow, the Cowboys don't want me again. No, that's just another player that's mad at the Cowboys right. for yeah. not signing yeah. him. Yeah, get here it, we get go. In line. Get in line, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, that I, that I something guess. about Sunday mornings with Odell. Things happen bad on Sunday mornings with him. That was when the plane incident was in Miami. Right. <laughs> He was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk Zeke when we come back on Mix Shots. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh, she's doing great. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? <sighs> great job, honey. Oh. oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. <sighs> Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. You hear that? I'm a torrential downpour. Torrential? What's that even mean? It means you can't see out of your windshield. And if you have the wrong car insurance, you might have to make it rain to fix your bumper. So switch to Allstate, save money, and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Based on coverage and limits selected, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. The season is finally here. For months, we've been gearing up to win. Now it's time for the team that performs on any field, United Ag and Turf. With John Deere zero turns for mowing, compact tractors for loading, mini excavators for digging, Gator utility vehicles for hauling, implements for grading, hay tools for baling, United Ag and Turf for winning. The official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com for more. Back, back to mixed shots. Get your spring shopping in during Market at the Star, presented by Flea Style. Come out to the Star in Frisco on Saturday, April 1st, and browse from over 50 local vendors from fashion to home goods, jewelry, and more. Visit thestardistrict.com slash events for more info. Flea, was it Flea what? Flea Style? Flea presented style? Presented by Freestyle. Freestyle. <laughs> okay. I, I, that was like... So, okay. Market at the Star, and I think they just had this weekend the home show at uh, at Ford Center. Oh, okay. Very nice. Um, Which, by the way, I attended last year. Yeah. And about three or four months later, bought new windows for half the house because I saw what the windows look like and what we had. And what they like can it. do for you. Uh -huh. Yeah, and What they can like, do for oh you. Oh my. And then... Uh, you know, we did that same thing. We did uh, the... Uh, we didn't do the whole house. We, we did... Either. We did half. We did the downstairs and the back... And then I'm in my backyard looking at Well, man, that's a big difference. We need to do the rest of the house. And we, we haven't do, done it yet. We do, too. And I, <laughs> we called our daughter, and I said, yeah, we just kind of spent your inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how much windows cost. <laughs> hey, but I put my windows in as they were being Wait, installed. The you guy put come, them in? I had to. <laughs> okay. uh, I had a guy came back, came over. We were, weren't even finished yet. With a car and say, hey, man, I'll, I'll, I'll buy your house for you. I'll buy your house for you. Because he saw the windows. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Immediate improvement. It's a striking Immediate difference. Immediate improvement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. right. Let's, uh, we're going to talk Zeke in a second. But first, Dalton Schultz still out there in free agency. What do you make of this? Well, I, I, I would imagine the Cowboys would have liked him back, but at their price, and maybe it's coming down to their price. <laughs> and maybe. I mean, because if you think about it, he was not a happy camper. He was not a happy camper. Right? He kind of played like it, too. 
Um, yeah, at certain points of the, of the season. But he, he would make plays that made you think, okay, I'd like him. That's too, right. But, like, at what cost? Because I've got two young'uns that did a decent job. Uh, and then I started looking on tight ends that were on the move. Uh, Darren Waller got traded to the Giants. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a crazy story behind that, but go ahead. Hunter Long <laughs> went to the Rams. Josh Oliver got re-signed by the Vikings as a blocking tight end. Well, he went from Baltimore. Oh, no, he was Baltimore. with Baltimore yeah. to the Vikings, and he got okay. The, the numbers Check out on that. his numbers. Three yeah. three years, twenty one million dollars, ten point seven guaranteed. Blocking tight end. And I'm sure that's what uh, Schultz is looking at. <laughs> yeah, because he's the so he's the second tight end because mm-hmm. obviously Minnesota's got T.J. Hawkinson yeah. as the other tight end. And then uh, Evan Ingram got tagged. Um, Janu Smith went to the Falcons from the Patriots. From the Patriots and Jawan is it Johnson to the Saints for two years, twelve million. Uh, and then there was others that have just recently even taken place, and he's like gotten veteran overlooked. minimum deals. Yeah, and when you look at his numbers now, over the past especially three years, you're looking at really good tight end numbers. Yeah. So he's, I'm sure if, if I'm Schultz, I'm thinking this is what I'm keying on. You know, I'm, I'm Dax outlet. You know, I'm what, the guy that he. Lo- the other one was Gesicki. Yeah, Gesicki yeah, was. The, yeah, Gesicki went done. from the Dolphins to, and and so this relates a lot with Dalton Schultz. Okay. Okay. Here's what the market is on tight ends right now. If this just happened over the weekend. Uh, Gesicki got one year, $9 million max. Max. From, max. Max from the Patriots. So he can he can make up to $9 million. That's where the tight end market is right now. How are you going to let Bill Belichick set the tight end market? Mm-hmm. I mean, with, you can't, why would you let that be the, the, the market? Well, it is it's now. A, the market is what, what, what did, the market what, is, what, I what guess. Did, what did what did uh, Schultz make last year? He was tagged. What did he make? It's ten point eleven. It was eleven million. Yep. For so, one year. So that's what he's looking for. Well, yeah. he's that's a starting point. That's, that's a what I'm talking point, about. Yeah. yeah. But he might need to back. Well, up. I'm just. <laughs> I remember those days. Yeah. I'm getting into that feeling right now. I mean, that's what that's what I if want. You don't that's get what I'm it, worth. If you don't get it that first week. And things start going down because everybody got their priorities. Mm-hmm. And they're, they've already spent their money. Yeah. So now. And, the, and, yeah, so who are you? Who are you left with? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, this is the secondary market now. Mm-hmm. And you might have to take a one-year kind of prove-it deal again to see when the market gets reset <laughs> next year. I wouldn't call it a prove-it year. He's already proved himself. No, prove it deal. Prove it, a prove-it deal. It, yeah. I don't care what well, you call it. Well, no one was taken. That's true. That's true. And there's been like 10 moves with tight ends. And right that's now. where you start to get nervous as a tight end. Yeah. Now, having said that about Gesicki, Schultz has better numbers than what Gesicki does. Now, oh, you look uh, this past easy. year, okay, 15 starts with Dallas. Schultz, 57 catches, 577 yards, five touchdowns. The previous year, 78 receptions, 808 yards, eight touchdowns. That okay. was the year. That was the year for him. Yeah. yeah. And so he gets tagged after that mm-hmm. year. All right, going back to Gesicki, this past year, only 32 catches, 362 yards, five touchdowns. 17 games, one start. 17 games, nine starts, just how, he, how he's used in, in Miami. So how was that said in the market? Seven, the year before – 73 catches, 780 yards, two touchdowns. And the year before that, 53 catches, 703 and six. So it's kind of similar to Schultz right there. He had a down year statistically compared to what Schultz did this year. And so that, that's where Gasicki is on a year, one though, was year. better than Schultz's. So, so it gets back to Gasicki signs with the Patriots for one year because he's got to get his, he's got to get back up. And, and it's a two tight end situation there with Hunter Henry. So they traded away Johnu Smith right, to John Atlanta. Lee. That's true. And now they've got their second tight end. You know how much Belichick loves using the two tight ends, yeah. especially uh, two tight ends that can also catch. Mm-hmm. You know. So anyway, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out with Schultz now. Here's the one with Josh Oliver, the blocking tight end. <laughs> by the way, three years, twenty-one million. Last year he had twenty-six catches. Twenty? No, no. Takes us back. He has 26 catches in the past three seasons and two touchdowns and averages 10.6 a catch. 
and he got three years max of $21 million. I, I promise you, if, if I'm Dalton, I'm like, I'm not even considering – or listening to that guy's numbers because he's not in my category. I mean, that's the way I'd look at it. Your arrogance, of course, goes away the more moves that get made without you being involved in it. So, you know, you can, you, your pride can stay with you but, but for so long, and I know I would be that guy that would probably – my pride would overstay. Now, this one will hurt you, but the deal the Cowboys got with Gilmore, Jalen Ramsey signed with Miami. Mm-hmm. Three years, fifty-five million max, thirty-five million guaranteed. The Cowboys are on the books for Gilmore for basically almost ten million dollars on one year. So, yeah, that's what the market starts at, and then you can see how it drifts and it drifts downward usually. Okay, Zeke, yes. what what uh, what are your thoughts on Zeke? Uh, my guess is. They thought the $10.9 million, and rightfully so, was, his base salary was a little much after they guaranteed Pollard $10 million. Mm-hmm. Um, my other guess is after everything he's done here, they didn't want to insult him by doing something with his contract and saying, okay, but we'll pay you $3 million. So... I think in, in some regards, if they were going to move on, they they kind of did them a favor by letting them go early for other teams that might be looking for running backs mm-hmm. to see what they can get. Now, my other understanding is, is don't sleep on if they're still looking for a running back after the draft um, that they go back to them and say, okay. That's what I was thinking. A couple Me years, too. Me three too. million, four million, something like that. Uh, we we'd like to have you back. You know, Samaj P. Ryan got two years, seven and a half million dollars from the Broncos, Ma- and, and that's probably the max. Probably yeah, I will have to look up exactly what his numbers guaranteed. are. But yeah. but you think about what type back Zeke is, and and his ability to pass protect. Apparently, P. Ryan is like that, was like that with Cincinnati, mm-hmm. and so Sean Payton probably looks at him as that type. Uh, Jamal Williams uh, went to the Saints, and it was three uh, three years, twelve million dollar max. Okay, so it was in that same. I think it, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was. Though that's the market for the running backs, and out if there. the Cowboys you know, end up signing, that's, that was Ronald. the that was the market last week for the running backs. Right now, this yeah. week, Ronald right. Jones will see what the Cowboys might offer him uh, as an unrestricted free agent. So he can test the market, see what's there, and if not, uh, you know, because Dak wasn't, you know, got interviewed about Zeke going, and he he won, you know, all in on that, and even. Uh, Troy Aikman spoke up about it, saying, you know, you got that type of guy, he's hard to replace. He really is. And on my bottom line on him is who's going to take up his 12 rushing touchdowns? Just tell me who. Pollard had a great year. He had nine, right? Uh, and, and and so, okay, say he gets 10. Well, where's the other 12 coming from? And, and that's where Jamal Williams, he had like 18 touchdowns for the Lions last year. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's a very similar type player and, and age-wise to where Zeke is. He got three years, 12 million, 8 million guaranteed. So it's really three years. And eight, who, who gave eight, that to him? New Orleans. And he was with Detroit last year. So that's kind of where the market was at the end of last week as far as running backs go. And so what's what's Zeke going to get someplace else? And he's sort of Williams in New Orleans, a supplemental back, mm-hmm. right? Because they're still and, banking on Kamara. Yeah. And, you know, 30 out of 32 yeah. teams in the Luck league. on that one. <laughs> yeah. It's basically, basically pretty much 29 out of 32 teams in the league. They're all supplemental backs, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. it's it's multiple That's just backs. That's how they use backs. I mean, the days. Raiders use Josh Jacobs. The Titans used uh, Derrick Henry all the time. Bell cow backs mm-hmm. and uh, Barkley with the Giants. Maybe, yes. but but and and maybe McCaffrey. We'll see how McCaffrey's going to be used on for a full season with San Francisco, but. That's that's the way the running. That's why the running back market is so low. And plus, you got the, the draft staring you in the face. And you know? another guy that wants out 
and San Diego probably doesn't want to pay him San Diego the uh, uh, chargers. LA chargers yeah. Austin Eckler wants mm -hmm. out, that's right? right? And they don't want to give him a big contract, and that's why he wants out. I think he's heading into his last year. All right, and, and I got one more point to make on um, Zeke. I went back and looked at, and I'm not saying Zeke is Emmett Smith, but I went back and looked at Emmett Smith's numbers in 1996. His seventh year in the league, okay. he was 27 years old, the same age as Zeke this past season, okay? Seventh year in the league, 27 years old. I mean, and Emmett had averaged 3.7 yards a carry in 1996 and scored 12 rushing touchdowns. <laughs> Zeke, his seventh year in the league, same age, 3.8 yards a carry, 12 touchdowns. Exact same numbers. So I remember it was several years ago hmm. I did this kind of study on running backs, and I determined that the line of demarcation on production was 28 years old. Once you got past 28, careers went downhill for running backs. And so, so there's one guy in history – Emmett Smith, yes. who went another seven years beyond that with another 9,000 yards. Well, here's, a, here's an interesting uh, fact. Let me get my interesting fact out. Um, from Gil Brandt, the 75 draft when the Cowboys were trying to decide if they wanted Randy White or Walter Payton. Okay. And they did a study, he said, and it said that the career length of – Defensive linemen far exceeded running backs. So they decided Randy White instead of Walter Payton. That's a tough one. All right, we got to go, and we'll talk to you next week on Mix Shots. Go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?